Welcome back Panthers Springs friends and if you are new here well happy spring break Woo! jazz hands I'm excited we have survived we have made it to spring break and I hope that by the time we are watching this I get to be back with you in person tomorrow I've missed getting to be at church with my people for two weeks all right, today we're going to learn about extravagant hospitality is the way that Pastor Cindy has worded it. So let's take a look at what that means, hospitality. You know, being a good redneck, being from the South, hospitality is something that was just very important to my family when I was growing up, okay? But not necessarily on a daily basis. And let's see if you guys can relate to this in any way. All right, when company comes, you may see something like this in your bathroom. Do I have it in the right spot, Assistant? And as you can see, it is lovely. Assistant, do you know what this is? It may look like a flower, but it's not a flower, it's is it? It's soap. It is soap. And why does it look so pretty, Assistant? Because it's never been used, boys and girls, right? This is reserved for the company. This is the company hand soap. Now. If you happen to get your hands dirty on a regular day, right, you get the shriveling bar of Dove soap because we're going to use it up. We're going to be good stewards. And if you, after you've washed your hands with lovely smelling soap and you want to dry them, I have some here ready to go for Easter should I happen to have company. You can see brand new company hand towels, right? But what do we use on a daily basis, assistant? Pan in. Best hand towel in the house. It's super thick, it's old, but it's well loved with a few bleach stains on it, right? If your hands get dirty, you get you some ivory or some Dove soap and you dry them on the bleach towel. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? All right, now it's meal time. We've washed our hands, right? You may see such a lovely place setting when company comes. As you can see, we have a lovely linen napkin that coordinates with some beautiful blue china here that was gifted to me by my mother-in-law. Do we, do we use this on a daily basis, assistant? <clears throat> you come home from school and you want a sandwich or you want some grapes, you might get this old Lightning McQueen plate that's probably older than the assistant. If you want a beverage, do you get a lovely, delicate teacup? Mm-mm. This is one of the assistant's favorites. This is a good one. And if you need to wipe your mouth, are we going to use linen napkins on a daily basis? Mm-mm. We're good stewards. We're frugal. What do you see on that, assistant? It's the Chick-fil-A logo. <laughs> it may be a Chick-fil-A napkin. That's exactly right. So this lovely things would be reserved for the company, right? And this might be what you use on a daily basis. And maybe the same thing goes with food. Perhaps you're gonna put out your finest for your guests, right? Miss D happens to make a mighty mean beef stew, but we don't have it very often because you have to be home all day and it takes a while. If you want beef stew on a Wednesday night, you best go downstairs and get you a can of beef stew, which the assistant won't eat by the way, because it's not the same. You might plan a pasta dish. You might have some spaghetti and meatballs, which I'm not great at making. Maybe you all are, right? That's a good company meal. If you happen to get the hankering for some spaghetti and meatballs at about 11.30 at night, you best go be thanking Chef Boyardee because that's who's going to be fixing your spaghetti and meatballs, right? Extravagant hospitality and not so extravagant, although don't knock it till you try it, right? So today we're going to talk about the story of the prodigal son. And there are many, many layers, like our fruit salad we made not long ago, to the story of the prodigal son. Okay, it is in the book of Luke, chapter 15. I hope I'm in the right <clears throat> passage this week. But it all starts with this man has some sons, right? And this one son uh, wants to pursue what they call riotous living, I think, in the, the King James Version. So he basically goes to his dad and he says, all I want from you is your money. And I'm not even going to wait for you to die. I want you to give me that money now because I don't want anything to do with you. I'm going to go out and have some fun. The father does that. The father says, okay. So the young man blows all his money, right? He's destitute. He has nothing to do. And he gets so hungry, he says, I wish that I could have some of that slop that the pigs are eating. 
And if we look at the context of a Jewish family where pork was forbidden, that he was even, his mouth was drooling, it was watering, not over some beef stew or some Chef Boyardee, but over some pig slop. He was so hungry. And then he came to his senses and he said, chapter 15, verse 17, How many of my fathers hired me and had food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but make me like one of your hired men. So he got the nerve to go to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. Ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. He says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And the father had every right to say, darn tootin', right? But that's not what he said. He says, quick, bring me the best. Bring me the best robe and put it on it. Put a ring on his fingers, put a ring on it, and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf. Bring the stew meat. Bring the beef stew and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Remember, he had more than one son. And I've always been ashamed to say I would probably have been like the other son. Meanwhile, back at the halls of justice, hey, let us know somewhere, Facebook or Instagram, if you catch that reference. The older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he said, what's going on? And they said, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf, the beef stew, because he is back safe and sound. And that made the older brother angry, right? Here's his beef stew, and he's been doing the right thing. He's been there with his dad, helping his dad, trying to be a good son, and his other brother goes off, blows all their money, abandons them, and they're bringing out the fatted calf. So he goes to talk to his dad about it. And he says, you never gave me the fatted calf. You never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours has squandered your property and comes home, you kill the fatty calf for him. And the dad says, my son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we are celebrating and we are glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. But I think what he's saying, boys and girls, I think the whole point of this is he knows he didn't deserve it. But that's a picture of God's love for us. He doesn't give us what we deserve. That's mercy. He gives us what we don't deserve. That's grace. And that was the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on the cross for our sins. Okay, and I want you to hang on to that thought as we enter this Easter season because we will come back to that. Hang on to that thought. And boys and girls, I hope you have a fabulous spring break. If it's spaghetti and meatballs that you like to eat on spring break, I hope you just get to eat to your heart's content. If it's going to Dollywood, if it's taking a big nap, whatever it is, I hope you get to enjoy your spring break. Please know that God loves you. So does Panther Springs United Methodist Church. And as they said on the Beverly Hillbilly, speaking of hospitality, take your shoes off, set a spell. Y'all come back now, here. Bye.